Today on Running to Him. Circumcision should be alive and well in the Christian world. It is not only for the male child in the Jewish world. We will read through the Pentateuch until January, and today we read Genesis chapters 16 through 18 and concentrate on verses 17, 9 through 12. Genesis 17, 9 through 12 says, God said further to Abraham, Now as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep, between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you. And every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations. A servant who is born in your house or who is bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your descendants. Now, male circumcision for Christians was officially stopped in Acts chapter 15 with the Jerusalem Council. There had been an argument raised in the Galatian churches that all male converts were to Christianity would need to be circumcised. Paul argued against that, and the Jerusalem Council agreed with him. But just because Christian males aren't physically circumcised, as outlined in our reading today, that doesn't mean that circumcision is meaningless to us. Several times in the Old and New Testaments, circumcision is used, metaphorically at least, for the cleansing of particular things. For example, in Leviticus 26.41 and Deuteronomy 10.16 and 36, it's used to describe what we are to do with our hearts. In Exodus 6.12 and 6.30, it's used to describe the circumcision of one lips. And in Jeremiah 6.12, it refers to the circumcision of the ears. And Romans 2.29 states, But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart by the Spirit not by the letter. His praise is not from men, but from God. So we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We need to view circumcision as it was considered in the Old Testament. We need to view it as an act of reverence towards God. And we also need to understand something else. We need to understand that circumcision was not only for the Jewish male child, Circumcision was given so that the mother and other Jewish women would also be a part of that covenantal relationship. In raising their son or other male children, they would regularly see God's covenant. And when having sexual relations with their husband, they would also see that God is in the bedroom and outside the bedroom. The Jewish male would also be reminded of his responsibility towards God several times a day because as he washed or went to the bathroom, he would remember the promises made to Abraham and the responsibility that came with those promises. So we as Christians must circumcise our hearts, our ears, and our lips so that we do not hear or say or covet things that are not of God. Circumcision should be alive and well in the Christian world. Just not what happened to the male child in the Jewish world. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.